My name is Julie Ann Link and welcome to the Music Link. This week on the Let's Link project, I'd like to welcome bassoonist and contrabassoonist of the San Diego Symphony, Layla Zamora. Thank you so much for being here, Layla. Thank you. For everyone watching, Layla and I met about 13 years ago at the Amaropa Solo and Chamber Music Festival in the Czech Republic when Layla was on faculty and I attended as a participant there. Layla, please share an overview of who you are and what you do as a professional musician. Well, as you say, my name is Leila Zamora, but actually it's a short, it's a short for, because my name is a very, it's a very long name. It's Leila Maria de Los Angeles Zamora Ballestero. And I was born in Costa Rica, but I consider myself a citizen of the world because um, I, I left uh, Costa Rica when I was really young. Uh, to work in a youth symphony in Colombia. And then after that, I went to study in the, uh, the Soviet Union at that point, which is Russia now. And then after that, I came, I came to the United States to finish my studies. Mm, wow. Wow. Tell me about where you grew up and do you ever visit? Yeah, I uh, as I told you, I was um, from Costa Rica. I'm originally from Costa Rica. I actually have a dual citizenship, um, Costa Rica and the United States. And I grew up in Costa Rica and I went to a magnet school, high school. And uh, it was a scientific school, but they also had music. And that's where I realized that I wanted to become a musician more, more because of peer pressure than anything else, just because the coolest people were the people who play classical music. So, and I sort of gravitated towards that. And although I thought I was gonna be a lawyer, but <laughs> I'm glad I, I became a musician. Mm. What was it like living in Russia? Oh, it was a wonderful time. It was right before the perestroika and the the musicians, the students, foreign students who went to study the conservatory were treated really well. We all live in dorms and we receive a stipend and we had like excellent teachers and, and the culture. Every day there were like several concerts going simultaneously. And it was just art, art, art and the museums and I mean, it's a great country, mm. a very artistic oriented country. People grow up listening to um, classical music and that's part of their lives. And, and they have a lot of respect for it and a lot of dedication. And, and kids start really early in music and then that's their path and they, they go to become great musicians because that's all they do, you know? Mm. So it was, it was a great experience. I, I love the country. I was really young. I was 15 and a half. So I was like the youngest person and the first woman in the Tchaikovsky Conservatory, the first woman bassoonist. So it was, um, I, I, I had a lot of attention from the teachers and from my peers. Wow. So, yeah, it so was great. I loved it. I loved it. Mm. How were you introduced bassoon to bassoon in Costa Rica and then on to Russia? Yeah, my, my besties in high school were all classical musicians. They were in the youth symphony. And of course, I wanted to belong there. So um, I auditioned. I, I thought I was going to play trombone. And, but I had braces, so the teacher that said it better if you don't play trombone, it's kind of painful. Why don't you go to the bassoon line? And I'm like, what is bassoon? <laughs> and then, but, and the bassoonist, he, his name is William Dietz. He's the teacher in Tucson. Tucson, he, he just retired, but he, he was a fantastic teacher and mm. I really loved um, getting lessons with him and I fell in love with the bassoon and I have been in love. I'm such a nerd of the bassoon since I cannot get enough of bassoon. <laughs> Do any of your family members have a musical background? 
Yeah, but mainly on band, band, municipal bands, they have like these symphonic bands in Costa Rica and they play all kinds of repertoire and a very high level. Still, they do. And uh, my family had, were part of a municipal band and they were composers and yeah. instrumentalists. But by the time I started, they were already working in my father was working as an accountant for the national parks in Costa Rica. So he wasn't doing music, um, but uh, they love, they were really loving and supporting. And, and, you know, for them, it was a big deal to let their daughter go to Russia at 15 and a half years old. Um, but they, they, they knew that it was the, the thing to do. And they are very, they were very proud of me. My father is passed, but my mother, they, they are very supportive and loving. Hmm. Layla, you mentioned that you wanted to be a lawyer. Um, did you yes. always want to go into law or did you always want to be a musician? When did that change? Well, I, I thought I was going to be a lawyer and, but then, you know, I started in high school in music and I started kind of late and I knew that to, I had to really commit if I wanted to make up for, you know, I started at 14 and everybody always started at 10 or something. And so I knew I had to commit. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to take one year where I'm like one or two years when I'm like really practicing hard and see if this is what I want. And, and the more I played the bassoon, I was like, the more in love and I'm like, no, I, I don't think I want to pursue any other things for the moment. And I'm going to see if I can pursue, um, studying bassoon. And then this teacher, William did, he left. So I applied for a Fulbright for, to go to the Soviet Union. And because I love this player, Valery Popov, he was very famous back then. But I, I ended up studying with his teacher, Roman Pablo Viteriohin. So that's how I started. <laughs> Peer pressure, but I, then I loved it. <laughs> wow. What do you feel like you learned from your Fulbright? Oh, well, um, I was very fortunate to get, to get a Fulbright in Costa Rica and get everything paid to study in another place and... I, I learned about to keep an open mind about cultures. And I went with an open mind to the Soviet Union, knowing that it was a communist country and they eat babies, you know, like <laughs> you know, things like that. And um, it was wonderful. Everything, the culture, the people were the warmest people. And the Soviet Union is made of many countries, you know, and there were people from Uzbekistan, Armenia, and there were people, there were also other foreign students from Ethiopia who went to clown school because they, they have a circus school. So they were being, becoming clowns and just meeting the cultures and their food and their costumes. It was just, it opened it opened my mind and I was fascinated and I was hooked and I decided to be a citizen of the world by then because wow. I just wanted to accept and include everything in my mm -hmm. life. How did you find, you know, learning different languages and communicating with music and language and what was that like? Well, um, uh, you know, music is not hard to communicate. Like my lessons at the beginning, my teacher was like Italian and, you know, I'm, I speak Spanish. So Italian is sort of similar. And, um, you know, he communicated ev I, everything. And little by little, I start learning Russian because we, you know, they when you have a Fulbright, they give you four hours a day of Russian in the morning and then the music classes. And it's, it's the conservatory has, um, so everything has to do with music. You're learning Russian, but everything has to do with musical terms and 
So, so little by little, I learned Russian and then there was that problem. There wasn't any problem, but at the beginning, I don't know, we didn't have problems communicating. I, I just understood everything and also by example, because he was playing and, and the lessons were wonderful. I mm. owe him a lot. Mm. Wow. Um, what did, how did you find the style of playing or do you feel like um, now, you know, um, in America and kind of comparing or just, is there anything you could share about that or um, that comes to mind? Yeah, uh, I mean, definitely it's a different style of playing. He, he studied in Germany, in West Germany. So it was more mm. of a German style mm. play, of playing. And um, I didn't feel a lot of difference from, even from the teacher who is from the United States and who was in Costa Rica. Um, and, and I feel like it just helped me to come up with my own style mm -hmm. of playing. And I feel kind of liberating, you mm -hmm. know, so I I don't think I I think I have when I when I hear myself playing I think I have a style of no style mm -hmm. <laughs> if you can say like mm -hmm. I'm like Bruce Lee you know Bruce Lee mm -hmm. had like several techniques incorporated mm -hmm. uh, to work his uh, martial arts and and he called it the style of no style mm -hmm. and I I always aim to that just to take the most beautiful and whatever work for me. Mm. So I didn't, didn't like stick with one style or the other. Mm. So. That's beautiful, Layla. Everything, everything mm. is beautiful for me. It's like, mm -hmm. I mean, you hear it more, more than bassoon. You hear it in oboe playing. Like mm -hmm. I love both, both styles, the American mm -hmm. and the European. Mm -hmm. oh, I, if it's a good player, it's a good player. You know, uh -huh. it doesn't matter. Yes. How did you first get introduced to contrabassoon? Well, um, I always loved the contrabassoon. I, I always loved and have played throughout my life since the beginning, since the beginning of in the youth symphony. I always was the third bassoon or contra. So, so I have been playing contra, but then, you know, I went to Russia and Colombia. Uh, I lived in Colombia and um, and then I came to the United States and just did bassoon, but I always wanted, and I, I play um, principal in an orchestra, and I always, I still had the contrabassoon in the back of my mind, and I thought that I will try to get a contra and take an audition because I wanted both to play both instruments, and see how it, that went. And it started going really well. And then I decided that I didn't want to be principal anymore. So I wanted to play all, all the positions. So, and, and, you know, playing principal takes a very kind of special person, you know, and, mm. and I feel like I was missing something even mm -hmm. though I was playing great repertoire, we play everything, uh, right to spring several times, you know, like in the in the Memphis Symphony, that's where Susanna is playing now. Yes. Um, and we play all the rep major repertoire. And then I was like, yes, but I want to play Contra. So I started studying Contra and I didn't realize how difficult it was, but it is a very difficult instrument. So it has taken me, you know, it took me like a good 10 years to feel like, okay, hmm. now, I can, now I can consider myself a contra player. <laughs> but um, I, I've, I've been loving the journey, being third, contra, third bassoon and contra. It mm -hmm. has taken me um, on a lot of places. I have discovered a lot of things that even professional bassoonists, I was a professional bassoonist, I was a principal bassoon, and, I, and yet I didn't know things about the contra. And I see it with a lot of professionals. They are like, oh, really? It doesn't have a whisper key. Like, <laughs> what, what really? <laughs> so um, if you yeah. don't have a whisper key, where is the whisper key of the contra bassoon? You know, like th little things like that. Mm -hmm. And 
you don't realize that you you don't know until you are like hands on playing contra like the idiosyncrasies of the instrument mm -hmm. and so that's why i decided to do that presentation that i'm going to do uh, um, just you know for the lip the, it is the lip to is contra 101 the lip to um the lip down to play contra bassoon mm -hmm. uh, what you need to know like very basic things that will help you is up the anxiety of playing contra mm -hmm. you know? What advice can you share about switching between bassoon and contra bassoon? Well, um, you have to be really comfortable with the reads. Like the reads are very important that, that you feel very comfortable, not very hard reads because you have to be able, and even just, um, I, I cannot tell you how many times I have to wait four moments Mahler second, um, Beethoven five, I have to wait three movements and then you start playing and you are on the spot. And there are places where you have to start pianissimo, like the right of step of spring, like also Spracta Ratustra. So you have to have a very responsive read. So the reads are very important mm. being, a, being a doubler doubling you know switching um something like rosen cavalier has 21 switches in the opera uh -huh. and they're very fast and you have to be like playing already very important stuff mm. so mother goose you're playing bassoon and suddenly you have a huge solo in contra you're playing second bassoon and then you have to so you know, so that's my advice. That's my one of my advice. And then just make sure you know your equipment and and you you are prepared and have more than one read. Did you ever consider changing careers? Well, um, I luckily I haven't had to look at that possibility, but throughout my life, I I was babysitting and I work um assisting a person and cleaning i have done some cleaning and uh, i also was a puppeteer at one point and that that is cool. hard <laughs> <laughs> you think that is uh, but um i i never had to like change careers i hope i don't have to you know we're going through a pandemic luckily i see that my orchestra is doing well and is very committed to get through this but you know i i'm not afraid i think as a musician we have so many skills you know we can focus we can organize we you know we we know how to use computers we like we have you know we're disciplined because we have to practice uh, we can transfer all those things if we need to be and work in a retail store and I think we're going to ace it, you know, <laughs> uh, if we, if we need to, you know, like, and there is no work that is too low for you, you know, like, um, every, every work, every job has dignity mm -hmm. and if you do it well and, you know, so, but I never, I never consider changing careers. I, I love music so much. I wanted to teach and go be a teacher in an university. And there was this specific university I really wanted to teach. But when the position came open, I wasn't really ready to quit the San Diego Symphony, <laughs> you know, so because I just love sitting there. Sometimes I don't even play. I'm just sitting there and I have the best seat in the house because I'm sitting surrounded by this sound. It's just glorious, something like Egmont Overture. I could just die right there. No problem. <laughs> Layla, can you, going to puppeteering, could you share a little bit about the behind the scenes of that work? Well, that was in, in actually I was in the Memphis Symphony, but um, the opera had a, an outreach and they did operas. And they brought a singer and the music pre-recorded and we just had to reenact the operas. Wow. And for some reason, 
they were short of puppeteers <laughs> and, <laughs> and it was amazing you know the skill mm. that you need to control the so i i learned a, a lot i cannot say i'm a great puppeteer but i did it <laughs> so mm. <laughs> and that was fantastic oh could you tell me a little bit more about how your music teachers have influenced you oh yeah um I had, had teachers and and had fantastic teachers. And I have to say that one teacher that was really special is my teacher at Baylor University, Jennifer Speck. And she was so devoted as a teacher to her students. And I needed that at that moment. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was in, in Moscow before that, studying with this teacher and he's like, you, practice to be a soloist and everything and and you learn the repertoire and everything but I need I knew I knew uh, when I left Russia that I I needed some basics read making little little details very basic details and so then I went to Baylor to finish my undergrad and she was all that and more like she was, um, so she was very nurturing, um, had a lot of patience with me uh, and feeling those little things that are so like basic, very basic things. Mm -hmm. We went back to basics and, you know, studies and methods and, and she was so patient. So that was a, a, a great inspiration. Then I had Bruce Granger in the Chicago Symphony and when I went to the Paul University and he was just uh, somebody that you just learn by example mm -hmm. uh, about somebody who is so musical that you, you're like always, and, and he's so musical in the most unexpected ways that you were like, what is he going to do next? Because this is going so exciting and he, you know, like he's, he was one of the most exciting players that mm -hmm. I have ever heard or played with. And mm -hmm. it was just fantastic. And I'm so sad he passed. But so I have had teachers that have feel different parts of my learning. Mm -hmm. And I'm still learning. Not because I've been playing in, in professional orchestras for more than 25 years, 26 years. Uh, I feel I'm still learning. I still want to learn. You know, I have taken lessons with, um, read lessons, refreshment, read lessons with people um, um, in in the industry, and 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 I'm still learning. I I just in this summer, I mean this this uh, past month, I taken lessons with. I think in Baroque bassoon lessons with a German teacher and a couple of German teachers. So I, I feel like I'm still learning and I will not stop learning. Beautiful. What have you learned about the music industry since graduating? Well, it's very hard. It's, it's not fair at all. And you have to accept that there is no, no way around it. It's very hard to come up with a better way to do auditions. For instance, making it into an orchestra. Uh, there are amazing musicians who are so nervous. They get so nervous and they never make it into an orchestra, but they are amazing musicians. Um, and it's a tragedy. And I wish there was a better, um, and, also that there are many ways to to develop yourself if you like not only playing in an orchestra or teaching in a big university you can come to a little city and make it your empire and be creative and inspire bassoon inspire kiddos to love the bassoon and um you don't need to be famous or anything to make a, a statement or change the life of somebody. Mm. Leila, can you share more about your teaching career? 
Well, um, I, I taught a little bit at uh, the University of Memphis when I was in Memphis and, mm -hmm. and then I had a private studio and I, and when I came to San Diego, I, I just wanted to focus on my playing more. So I didn't like took students or pursue students, but I have had students who come from Tijuana, they cross the border from Mexico to the United States. And, and, but basically my passion is not so much to teach the business as to travel to places with less fortunate kids and make them love music uh, and share the love, not make them, but share the love of music. <laughs> and I, I've been told that my love for music is contagious. So, which makes me that, that, that's it. That makes me my, my life worthwhile. Yeah. And, and so I've, I've done several projects where we have, I have help uh, in different orchestras and different studios. Um, I've done work in Guatemala, in Indonesia, mm. in Sumatra, um, in, and Africa, in Africa. Uh, um, and it has been an amazing experience to go there and share music and do music in those countries and Costa Rica as well. Mm -hmm. I work with, with uh, some less fortunate kids and and we we were gonna do one another one in Guatemala. Mm -hmm. uh, bassoon in our orchestra was gonna go and fix bassoons um, wow. for free. Uh, he's a luthier and but it was in June last year mm -hmm. and because of it we had to mm -hmm. postpone it. But um yeah yeah I, I love I love that and I'm I'm looking into doing other projects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Leela, is this all through the San Diego Symphony or another program? Well, or how does this happen? Some of them, some of them, um, I, some of them, I done it on my own. Like I organized it on my own, wow. but I always take like for Africa, we took four suitcases of musical instruments, wow. music, uh, accessories, and, and like at least suitcase, two of the suitcases were donations from the San Diego Symphony. And now, now people are like, do you still need? And so I collect and I have like a little box of, I still collect stuff, reads, people send me reads, like reads that they don't think they are good or something and they don't throw them. And they sell me box of reads and they are very good for little kids who are just starting and they just need to learn how to crow. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. Um, so I, I take lots of reads and um, music, printed music. Um, for instance, the assistant principal in San Francisco, he just told me he's going to donate a box of music. Wow. For, and, and we are also working on trying to make a, a, an international library for to lend music. Um, so mm -hmm. that's, that's one of my upcoming projects and so I, I I love teaching but I don't pursue students mm -hmm. and I also I taught um, I teach people with special needs mm -hmm. and I have taught somebody with Alzheimer's and I, I taught Dulcian to that person and the neurologist thought that he he was being he was doing really good because he was having lessons. <sighs> So even though he will forget, like from playing, he played five measures and he will forget and we will go to those five measures. But I, I do have the patience for that. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, I, I love, I find it fascinating. And so, and I teach older, I have taught older people. I also find it fascinating. And, mm -hmm. and um, I do, I, um, one of my passions is to teach chamber music. Like I went to uh, the Ameropa in the Czech Republic. I, I also teach, I have teach a lot of years in Apple Hill chamber music in um, Sullivan, New Hampshire. Um, and I love that place. That place is fantastic. And so I 
I do little a little bit of coaching chamber music. Wow. Thank you so much for the work that you're doing, Layla. Yeah. Can you share more about your orchestra career? Well, I love playing in orchestra. I and and you know, mainly, you know, I play contra and and so I don't have to play all the time. And some of the some other times I just have to sit in there, like I said, for many moments. And I just love to be able to be relaxed and watch the violins and the bowings and the English horn playing beautiful solos and you know and I'm just there like with a big smile because I am the luckiest person you know to be just sitting in there and have the best seat and 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 I I love playing um um bassoon and contra and I've played in three professional orchestras in the national orchestra in Costa Rica and uh, Memphis Symphony and San Diego in the States. And um, I also play with uh, the Auckland Symphony in New Zealand and which I loved, I, I loved it so much. And Seattle and Atlanta, I play principal, principal bassoon in Atlanta in March of last year. And, um, I, and I just love when I, in St. Louis, I will play with the St. Louis Symphony as a sub. I, 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 I love if they, if I get a call like that, it just makes my day, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I love like being like the traveling musician and going and playing for yes. the Alabama Symphony. Also, I play with the Alabama. I, I just love to go to different orchestras and. Mm. Do you have a favorite um, orchestra piece? Well, I don't have a favorite, like favorite, favorite, but I can say Shostakovich Symphony has hit a very special spot in my, like, it just, I feel energized. I just, it totally, every time I see a Shostakovich, I'm like, woo. <laughs> I love it. So basically I, anything Shostakovich, Stravinsky, not necessarily a rite of spring, but you know, Petrushka, mm -hmm. you know, the other ballets. And like I was telling you, Dombarto Knox, I love that piece. Um, but um, I, I also love the classics, you know, Beethoven, Haydn. Mm. Could you tell me about a memorable audition experience? Well, okay. yes, I can tell you. <laughs> and this this memorable um memorable this memory is is more a lesson because I came to the San Diego Symphony uh to take the audition and I play an excerpt during the audition and I crack a low note and I was like that's it I'm out and so I finished, I finished playing all the excerpts that they asked me, and then I left the hall. I didn't, I, I was like, there is no way I'm gonna pass. I left the hall and luckily the, the hotel was in front of the hall, like diagonal. And I, I packed the Contra bassoon cause you know, you have to pack it in big box and everything. I packed the Contra, I changed the flight to leave as soon as possible. And then I get a call and it's the personal man manager. And he's like, Layla, we're waiting for you for the finals. Where are you? So the lesson, I learned the lesson and I see it. And the lesson equates to some, to people that I see in gymnastics. Don't ever give up. Even if you make a mistake, you see those people in gymnastics, they finish and they finish tall. Mm -hmm. Oh, if you, if you think, if you make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. Like I thought, you know, like keep giving your best because then after that, I saw Michael Jordan in the TV and he's like, you know, if I, if I throw a ball and I miss the hoop, I don't dwell on that. I keep trying to do because I know that I have game and I know that I'm good and so just keep keep trying your hardest. Don't give up until the very end. And 
really so because i went uh, i i went back and i just decided that i was just gonna give it all for the finals and mm -hmm. and then the best thing happened which was that i got the job so don't ever give up because you know you never know what they are listening to and if you are playing in high in a high quality plane and you are doing everything and you crack a note uh, they are not gonna mind so much because even in the finals i play the ravel piano concerto and at the end it ends on a b flat and i i crack that little b flat and everybody laugh <laughs> And I'm like, oh no! And they they were like, okay, you can do it again if you want, but it it was very good. Don't you don't have to? But I did it again. And when you do it something again, make sure you nail it. Okay, that's that's my. That's my but that, that's the memory of that's and it was like it changed my life forever and my way of thinking of never giving up, never give up. Hmm. So amazing, Layla. My sister watches these interviews and she was a gymnast. Um, and it's such a beautiful message, yes, of never giving up. Um yeah. and finishing and finishing strong. Yeah. Mm. yeah, finishing strong and tall because auditions are the most drooling and draining thing, you know. It takes it takes everything, every part of you. So you should be proud that you did it. You know that mm -hmm. you stood, that you stood up in a stage by yourself, and you know you wanted something so bad that you, you know. So mm -hmm. just be proud of that, and yeah. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. How do you cope with music performance anxiety? Oh yes, I can tell you a lot about that because <laughs> I, I am a very nervous person. I will follow, you know, I always think that we should have seat belt. <laughs> when, I, when I'm about to start a concert, I'm like, where's the seat belt? I need to put a seat belt because uh -huh. sometimes I've been so nervous that I feel like I'm going to fall out of my chair. So I would say, you know, acknowledge that you're nervous and then, and then it's like, and then you have to start working mentally. You have to say to yourself, I practice this music enough, you know, I know what I'm doing. Remember, just try to put yourself in, in the good, in your good place and like remembering moments of your practicing when you were nailing and, you know, you have to do a lot of mental work to bring yourself in. Listen to your breathing and, uh, you know, just not do like, relax your body also not do jerking movements or turn the page or you, nothing that it's gonna mm -hmm. make you know you have to bring yourself to the center mm -hmm. and i've been working on that all my life i still get nervous and um but you you just have to accept it okay i'm nervous i'm dying okay but you know how am i gonna cope with that is it's I'm, I need to cope with that, okay? That's not gonna define me because mm -hmm. I work hard and I nailed it before and just, but that's also backed up by the fact that you practice your butt off, mm -hmm. okay? That you put your work, okay? I put the work, I don't need to be, you know? And I always said that my sister said, oh, so you are like a transformer. You're you're turning into Primus, Optimus Primus. <laughs> <laughs> and I always remember that, you know, like, okay, I'm turning in. And also I said, I said, I'm Michael Jordan because remember what Michael Jordan said that he doesn't dwell on the mistakes, you know, he's just like focusing and he knows that he's he's good enough that he can do a good game and he's delivering quality. And just because he made a mistake, don't, don't think about that. Don't think, oh, if I get a mistake and no, don't start analyzing those things at that moment. That's not the time to analyze. Mm. And not even after the concert is the time to analyze. It's way later, you know, in the concert, just be proud you are there. You made it there. You're playing, sitting with colleagues, amazing. And, 
I think that this pandemic is making us appreciate even more, you know, because the, the little times that we meet with the symphony now mm -hmm. during pandemic, we are, everybody is in cloud nine. I can mm -hmm. tell. Even the conductor, you know, I see our conductor, he's like, God, even if he's under, you know, a shield and a mask is still better than nothing, you know? Mm -hmm. so. hmm. Have you ever experienced any music related injuries? Yeah, well, I have had like arm that hurt mm -hmm. and, and, you know, like stretching helps a lot mm -hmm. and rest and eyes, um, eyes cold and cold and hot help mm -hmm. your arms. But I, I never have like a major injury. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm strained. Like, for instance, playing Baroque bassoon, the stretch is yes. bigger. Mm -hmm. so, so it's sort of, it's awkward. It's uh -huh. awkward. Bigger. But, but, you know, I, I know, I know when to stop and, mm -hmm. you know, I know I stretch before mm -hmm. I play those instruments. Stretching mm -hmm. is good, you know, so. Yeah, I was thinking I learned, of contra, yeah, or just, and. Yeah, exactly. Con being contra, mm -hmm. my arm is very, uh -huh. because I have to leave the instrument. You have to yeah. leave and you cannot use your knees. In your back. So you have to use, yeah, you have to use your core, so. So yeah, I feel it when I play, when I'm playing something, both instruments, I feel it, but, mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. you know, just deal with that and try mm -hmm. not to abuse it or anything. Mm -hmm. like yes. But I've been lucky that I haven't had like a major mm -hmm. injury. Mm -hmm. Could you share more about your reed making style and techniques for bassoon and contrabassoon? Well, I don't, um, I I have I play with very big reeds mm -hmm. and I play always like really big reeds. I I don't think it works for people for other people. I don't know very many people with who plays with, with those reeds. So it's something I I'd rather not. I mean like I don't I don't teach how. I mean I teach them how to make reeds or mm -hmm. you know but with smaller pieces of cane, mm -hmm. uh, smaller shapers. Mm -hmm. I, I do have smaller shapers, but I am um, so, you know, my, my reads are, I, I can only, I, I aim for my reads to be balanced, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. have a spine and they are very balanced. They close the, you know, they close uniformly, <laughs> if that's mm -hmm. a word. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. They close very, um, normal and mm -hmm. interesting mm -hmm. balance of the whole read mm -hmm. it and the crow but other than that i'm open to i can play with other reads from other people but not very many people can play with my reads mm. and my reads because they are big they are not ideal for high register so mm -hmm. if i i'm playing something high like I was playing this um, serenade, um, I'm trying to remember by whom, but mm. it had like, it starts with an E and goes to an F or something like that. I I have to just work on a read differently and make mm -hmm. a little different reads to play mm -hmm. that high. Mm. But yeah, so, and the same with Contra, um, I play with very particular reads. They are, they are very light because I want to be able to play as piano as possible, mm -hmm. um, but they might mm -hmm. not be. And also I'm not a huge person, so I need reads that are light. Uh -huh. yeah. Wow. Leila, you talked about this a bit earlier on just music skills that you learned, but can you share any others that um, people can apply to their everyday life? Um, well, one of them is to love thyself, <laughs> mm. you know, um, always recognize your accomplishments. Just because you didn't get a job in the first try or something, I mean, you put an effort and you got from point A to point B, you are advancing. People should not be so self-deprecating, 
you know, and they they should love themselves. There are times, there are times for self criticism, and there are times where you should leave yourself alone, <laughs> and <laughs> and silence your gnomes. You know, your little gnomes that are like, oh, you're gonna miss or something. You know, you're you silence that part, and you're like, okay, I did this, and I should be proud, and recognize everything. You be proud, but I mean, also be realistic. You know, like if you didn't do well in an audition, what what do you need? For me, for instance, uh, it was um, Mariachi Figaro, and so then I spent. I cannot tell you how much time. In fact, I'm writing a little book about an uh, exercise for this excerpt for five <laughs> excerpts, and um, and of how to study this to nail. To nail it every time, mm -hmm. and I did that work, and it worked. So, mm -hmm. so, so you have like, and I, I apply that to my life. Like, okay, you don't have all the ingredients to cook something, you know. Just um, what, what do you have? What can you do different? Like, um, so, and just be disciplined. Okay, I'm gonna do this and and organize organization. We we have organized and. And openness also. I feel like musicians are very open minded and mm. so is there any advice that you can share for musicians just starting out? Yeah. Um don't give up and try to find fun on it. Don't suffer mm. much, you know, like and don't and and there is a time to be competitive, another time for to just have fun, and just love that you can produce some art with your hands and your mouth, and you know your you can produce. I mean, and and sometimes even your soul will reflect in that playing. People that are like extremely shy, and then you hear them playing, and you're like, oh my god, it's so beautiful that's the only outlet they have. So, wow. so, and just have fun and learn to be a team player. Very important. Learn to be a team player mm -hmm. and don't be, and don't criticize if you need to, if you don't need to be really careful when somebody asks for criticism. Mm. Thank you, Layla. Um, who do you think I should interview next? Well, um, there are like great educators out there now of the bassoon. I feel um, there is this woman mm -hmm. that you probably know, Nicolasa Custer. Yes. Uh, and she, I, I think she has a lot of insight having lived in Latin, in Latin America all her life because she's mm -hmm. the daughter of missionaries. So she was born in Peru. And her career has taken her to Kazakhstan, and so she's good. Um, Anthony Partner Panther, he lives in Los in Los Angeles, and he's a conductor and an mm -hmm. exceptional bassoonist. Um, wow. He's also great. Um, oh man, the list is just mm. so long. Mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> but but those are to name a few people Thank that. You. I think that are very different and see the world in a different mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. um, Layla, uh, Nicolasa um, is going to chat in April um, oh. and would love to look up Anthony. Um, yeah, thank you so much for those recommendations. Thank yeah. you so much for sharing this interview today, Layla. Ah, that was so, <laughs> so fun. I'm sorry, I just blah, blah, blah. blah. <laughs> no, you're amazing. Um, it's wonderful to get a glimpse into your life and career as a professional musician. Mm, thank you. Thank you. For everyone tuning in, keep an eye out for new videos with great bassoon guests every Thursday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. On the Let's Link project, every guest interviewed here is hosting a free online Zoom panel discussion the following Sunday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time that you can register for on the Music Link website. 
Please like, comment, and share any questions or feedback on the section below and subscribe to this channel for new videos every week. Check out the Music Link Instagram and Facebook pages for more information too. The Music Link is a New Zealand-based online platform for people to share, learn, and connect. Thank you for watching and I'll see y'all in the next video.